Hello, for this tutorial we're going to cover how to create some custom flow nodes that will allow you to freeze your screen, show the cursor, and use the cursor to then click on objects in your scene to return the object you're clicking on. In this uh, initial setup here, this is already done. So if I fly my camera in, when I hit the C key, my camera is now frozen, my cursor has shown up. If I right click on an object, it will disappear, and if I right click on it, it will reappear. So I'm sorry, if you left click on your object, it will disappear, and if you right click, it will reappear. And this is done through level flow, as I have demonstrated here. We're going to do a toggle to lock the camera and show the cursor, and then we're going to do setting the visibility of a unit with the mouse click by using a custom flow node called mouse picked object. Now in this example I'm just setting the visibility of the unit that I'm returning but of course once you have the unit and the actor you could do anything you wanted to it. You could unspawn it, you could spawn new actors or units in the same location or in the location you're clicking on or you could use it to push things around your scene with the cursor as you click. So let's get out of here and get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up our script file in the Lua folder for the player.lua. What we're going to do in here is we're going to write a custom function that will toggle freezing the camera. So I'm going to scroll down here to just before player init. And I'm going to write a function toggle freeze camera. Give it a var of freeze. And I want my local to be the player camera, which is what I want to disable. I'm going to have a player ref that I'm going to initialize in the spawn. I'm going to get the free cam controller. And this is the unit controller that is controlling the movement through the manager in the app kit. And I'm going to set this enabled and do not freeze so that I can make this a toggle and end my function. So what this is going to allow us to do is reach back into this function through a flow node that we're going to create that will allow us to toggle freezing the camera on a key press or anything you'd like to toggle it with. <clears throat> so we need to add this player ref, which I've already done up here at the top. We're going to do a local player ref equals nil. Then we're going to add this player ref into the player.spawn player. Basically what we're doing here is we're, we're storing the player here as the player ref. And then we uh, have our toggle freeze camera right below that where we use player ref there. So we're going to save this function. <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and open the flow callbacks and also the global definitions for the flow nodes as well here. So in the flow callbacks, we want to lock this camera movement. So I'm going to create a function here for using that uh, freeze camera toggle. I'm going to call this lock camera movement, T for table. We're going to do a, a local bool equals T dot locked or T dot locked lowercase. And we're going to toggle freeze 
camera. And this is a bool. <coughs> so this is going to lock our camera movement when we call that function. Now we need to define our flow node here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one over since it's already set up for us here. So I'm going to call this lock unlock active camera. And for my arguments, of course, it's going to be locked. We're going to add some brackets here. And the type is a bool. And the default, of course, would be true. The function that we want to call is going to be our lock camera movement function that we created here in the flow callbacks. And the category can stay as a project. So for our brief, we're going to add here so we can know what it is with a mouse over. Say locks, active camera movement, or returns it. OK, so now if we go back to our level, go into level flow, and we right click and go to project, we have a lock, unlock, active camera node available for us here. So that is the first step. The next step we want to do is we want to create a flow node that's going to show our cursor. So we're going to go back here to these uh, flow callback and we're going to write a function that's going to uh, set our to show our cursor. So our function will be uh, it's project flow callbacks dot set show cursor and local bool equals t dot bool. And we're going to say if stingray.window, then stingray.window.set show cursor. End, end, end. Now that we have that function, set show cursor, we're going to go ahead and define that over here. So I can grab this. I'm just going to duplicate it again. We're going to call this set show cursor. Our arguments will be bool. type will be bool, the default will be true, and our function of course is set show cursor. We'll leave that in project. And our brief can be shows the cursor. Now if we go back into our level flow and we right click and go to project, we have a set show cursor node now. So now that we have these, let's go ahead and set this up. 
we're going to get a keyboard button input and I'm just going to use the C key and I'm going to use a toggle function here from the flow and control input basically this is going to toggle locking my screen and showing my cursor so I'm pressed I want to toggle this in <clears throat> if it's even locked is true we want to set show cursor to true as well we can duplicate these of course now if it's odd you want to set these to false so let's see if that works so if I hit the C key my screen is now frozen and I have the cursor movement here then I can move around and if I hit C again I now have control of my camera and can fly around again so it is working as intended. So let's go ahead and group these. And we're going to name this toggle lock camera and show cursor. And you can arrange these however you like uh, to make this more or less easily organized on your screen. I just like mine a little bit smaller so I'm just going to group them together like this. So again now we have a keyboard button C that we hit that will toggle between locking and unlocking the camera movement and showing and unshowing your cursor. So the next part of this we want to do is we want to know whether or not our cursor is showing that way we can then use the mouse click when that happens so to do that we need to write another function that's going to get whether our cursor is showing or not so we're going to do function project flow callbacks dot get show cursor we're going to do a local is showing equals stingray dot window and stingray dot window dot show cursor Turn show equals is showing. And end our function. So this is just going to return a uh, query that we're going to set up here is is my cursor showing or not? Yes or no. So in our flow nodes here, we need to set this part up. So again, I'm just going to copy and paste this so it's all set up and ready to go for me. And this is going to be called get show cursor instead of set. There are no arguments for this, so we're just going to make this empty. We are going to have he returns and we're going to return show equals bool get rid of this extra bracket and then our function, of course, is get show cursor. And we're going to put in a query here 
equals true, just so that we know that this just is uh, returning a value for us, and that's all it's doing. And then we're going to say our brief is returns if cursor is showing or not. Okay, let's save that. We go into projects now. Get show cursor, and we have a return here that's going to let us know whether our cursor is showing or not. We're going to use this uh, this out node here um, in a few minutes so that we know uh, when we're available to use the mouse clicking to pick. For this next part, we're going to go to the help docs here, and there's a uh, section for picking a unit with the mouse. There's a nice little function in here that you guys can all copy and paste, which is what I'm going to do. So we can copy that. Go back to our uh, flow callbacks. And we're going to paste this function in right here. <coughs> so we have this project flow callbacks dot mouse picker is what I'm going to call my function. It's a little bit different than what the paste was, but that's what I'm going to call it. And it just goes through if I'm a simple world and get my camera, get my screen space location, convert that to the 3D world location, and then it's going to do a ray trace out from that location to see what it is that you've hit. Then it's going to return our actor object, which is our unit, and our actor. And I put a couple prints in here. Found collision, or did not find collision. You guys can add those in if you like or not. And then for my returns, I'm going to return the unit, which is the actor object. I'm going to return the actor, which is the actor. I'm going to get the normal. And I'm going to get the distance. So to set this up, I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy again here. Paste. We definitely want to get rid of the query. So we can delete that out of there. And the name of this is going to be called Mouse Picked Object. There's no arguments. And for the returns, we're going to return a unit, which returns unit. We're going to do actor, which will return the actor. And these are all the uh, returns from our function. We're going to return the normal, as we specified. which is a vector 3. And then we're going to return the distance, which is a float. Copy this, the function is going to be the function we just pasted in here. Project flow callbacks mouse picker. Project and our brief is going to be returns what the screen space cursor has clicked on. So let's have a quick look, make sure this is correct. Mouse picked object, no arguments. Return unit, actor, normal, and distance from our function. Our function is mouse picker project and returns what we've clicked on. So we'll save that. Make sure this function here is saved. Go into our level flow, right click, go to project, mouse picked object, and there's our node. Actor, distance, normal, unit. So let's set this up. 
we're going to do a couple keyboard presses here. Actually, let's do the mouse. So we'll do input, mouse button, and let's do the left button. We'll copy and paste this and make the second one the right button. And we're going to use this get show cursor, of course, to know whether our cursor is showing and whether we can do this or not. So to do that, we're going to do a flow control branch. We're going to use two of these. Our condition on this branch is going to be that get show cursor. And if this is pressed, then we'll move forward if it's true. So we're going to use our mouse picked object. If it's true, we're going to go forward. We're going to make a copy of this. We're going to do two different things here. So we have our mouse picked object. So for this particular, I'm just going to uh, set the unit visibility. So I'm going to do unit mm, set unit visibility. I'm going to do this twice. So out of here, I'm going to get the unit I've clicked on. Out of the out, I'm going to go into the in. So we're going to unit. And out of the out, we're going to go into the in. <coughs> and I'm going to say visible, false, visible, true. So the intention here is that if I have my cursor showing by hitting the C key above, and then I left click on something, it should become not visible. If I right click on something that returns a hit, it should be visible. Of course, this will only return on units in your scene that have actors, because it is looking for a collision there. So if your unit doesn't have an actor, it won't return a hit at all. So we're going to save that. We'll go into the level viewport. Let's give it a play. My camera can move around and zoom in a little bit. If I hit the C key, my camera is now frozen and WASD does not move me around. But I do have my cursor. So if I left click on a cube, you can see now that that has disappeared. If I right click in the same spot on the cube, it will reappear. This will happen with any object with collision. I can make my floor disappear, all my cubes disappear by clicking here. Or I can right click and these items will reappear. If I hit C again, now I have my camera back and I can move around my scene. Again, if I hit C, I'm now frozen. I can no longer control my movement, but I do have mouse movement and I can right and left click to hide and show objects that I'm clicking on. So again, just to recap, here's our level flow and we can reorganize this a little bit better. We can group this and we will call it set visibility with mouse click. So we have two groups here. We have our toggle lock camera and show cursor. Hitting the C key toggles between locking the camera and showing the cursor or not. And we have this set visibility with mouse clicks we just demonstrated. With our custom get show cursor node, we know whether the cursor is returning showing or not. If it is true, then we come out of here and we use our custom mouse picked objects to select an object in the scene. Once you have clicked on something, it will return the unit, normal, distance, and actor. So you could run an actor out pin here, and if this was a dynamic actor, you could do physics, actor, add actor, impulse. You could use this actor impulse to then push an actor around in the scene by clicking on it. So once you return your mouse picked object, you can pretty much do whatever you'd like with it on your screen. Let's go back to the script editor here. In the player, we did a local player ref here so that we could store the player off, set that to nil. And then here in the player spawn, where the player is defined the local here, we have player ref equals player so that we can use that again. We added this custom toggle freeze camera. So that is freeze. We use the player ref to get the player camera stored off there. And then we uh, set this enable, not freeze. So we use that custom node then in our flow callbacks to 
lock the camera movement here. And then we also set up our lock camera flow node here. We did the same to set show cursor and get show cursor. The set show cursor is what's actually going to give you the cursor so that you can move it around. The get so show cursor we just set up as a query so that will return if the cursor is showing or not. That way we can do things on a condition. If my cursor is showing, allow me to click on objects. If it is not showing, don't allow me to click on anything. And then we have this uh, mouse picker script that we have available for you in the help docs. You can just copy and paste that directly in. And we kind of covered what this goes through and what it does to return the screen space location into a 3D world location, send out a raycast, and then select and return your actor object, which is your unit, your actor, a normal at distance, and anything else you'd like that ray to return, you could also set that up yourself. And we set all of those up, of course, in our global.script flow nodes, so that our flow nodes are then available for us in our project menu. Get show cursor, lock unlock active camera, mouse picked object, and set, set show cursor. So that concludes the tutorial on how to write some custom flow nodes, add a couple of Lua functions, and use those functions to then freeze your camera, get your cursor, click on things in the scene, and manipulate them. Please look forward to more tutorials in the future.